Where do you think the largest collection of sand dunes is in the Western Hemisphere? I'll give you a second to think about it. If you said New Mexico, you'd be wrong. If you said Colorado, you'd be wrong. If you said Mexico, you would also be wrong. But if you said Nebraska, you would be correct. That's right, the largest sand sea, both in North America and in the Western Hemisphere, is actually in Nebraska. And it covers an area of 19,000 square miles, which is bigger than the state of West Virginia, covering a quarter of the whole state. They're bigger than the Mojave Desert, they're bigger than White Sands, and yes, bigger than anything you'll find this side of the Sahara. But they don't really look like your classic sand dunes. Shout out to my subscriber for suggesting this area. I never looked that much in Nebraska and I thought it was super cool, so thanks. The sand hills are a mix of dune morphologies formed during the late Pleistocene, about 15,000 years ago. We see Barkin or Barkanoid sand dunes where wind was really strong but sand was limited. We also see parabolic U-shaped sand dunes. We also see linear dunes where shifting wind directions formed long linear ridges. The sand that built the Nebraska sand hills was actually sourced from the eroding Rocky Mountains during the last glacial period. As glaciers retreated during the late Pleistocene, meltwater rivers like the Platte River carried huge amounts of quartz-rich sediments eastward into the plains. When the climate turned drier and vegetation died back, strong winds picked up that fine sand from river sediments and blew it across central Nebraska forming massive dunes. But why don't these look like the Sahara Desert? And why don't they come to mind when we think of sand dunes? It's because they're locked in place by vegetation, but their shapes tell the story of a wild past when this was a dry, windswept landscape. Buried beneath the surface, scientists have actually found preserved footprints from walking megafauna. These footprints were imprinted in the sand and then covered by more sand, thus preserving them in place. Tracks from ancient bison and stegomastodon, which is an elephant-like megafauna, were preserved in the sand deposits. The footprints give us a snapshot into life right before the Pleistocene megafaunal extinction, about 11,700 years ago. Scientists believe that these megafauna were walking around trying to find food and water, which was actually available in these sand dunes because the sand dunes would migrate and block streams, creating lakes and places for vegetation to take root. To piece together the region's climate history, geologists actually drilled core samples into the dunes in various locations throughout the area. And inside these core samples, scientists actually found alternating layers of wind-blown sand and peaty organic material. The peat layers date as far back as 12,000 years ago into the early Holocene epoch and show that the region was wet enough for vegetation and wetlands to form. Sand layers, on the other hand, represent a much harsher time of more arid periods. And this is when the vegetation died because there was less water and when reactivated and remobilized the sand through saltation to remobilize and create an active sand dune. Some reactivation events even happened as recently as the medieval warm period and the Little Ice Age, which is the cutest name for an ice age I've ever heard. Aww. These cycles tell us that the Nebraska sand hills have responded to recent climate fluctuations, not just ice age conditions. These dunes sit atop the Ogallala Aquifer, which try saying that five times fast which is one of the most important aquifers in the U.S. It is actually one of the biggest aquifers in the world. It's the third biggest. The Nebraska Sandhills actually help recharge this aquifer. The area gets a ton of storms coming from the Gulf of Mexico, which just let down huge amounts of water, usually in the summer between about May and July. And the sand in this area acts almost like a sponge, letting rainwater percolate down to the aquifer, supporting farming, ranching, and supplying drinking water for eight U.S. states. Yummy. And let's get cosmic for a second. Dunes aren't just an Earth thing. We see them on Mars and other planets too, especially in places like Nili Patera, where Martian winds blow basaltic sand over the surface. We also see them on Titan, which is a moon of Saturn. NASA's Cassini mission actually revealed equatorial dunes made from solid hydrocarbon grains being moved from methane. So from the late Pleistocene in the Nebraska sand hills to the equator of a moon orbiting Saturn, dunes are everywhere. The Nebraska sand hills are more than just a great place for cows to get their lunch. <coughs> They're a fossil record, a climate archive, and a living aquifer filter. They connect Earth's Ice Age past to otherworldly landscapes in the solar system. So if you're into geology that spans epochs and planets, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.